God is good. All the, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Please rise as we sing of the greatness of our Lord. <clears throat> One day. 
gracious God, when Jesus went to the cross, he demonstrated just how dead we are in our sins and how much we need your rescue. Yet on the third day, he rose from the dead, throwing off the darkness of my sin and the power of death, showing us that as Christ is raised, so am I. Forgive us for the sins we cling to. As Jesus carried our sins into the darkness of death, help us to let us let go of those things that hold us in darkness. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us your future in which we are made new. We ask this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Dear friends, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. No, 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 not right now. Give it on. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, God has atoned for sins we could never cover. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. We are a new creation. Together and by God's grace, may we walk in newness of life. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now turn to one another, make eye contact, and wave as you say, God's peace be with you. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 30. The same night he got up and he took his two wives, his two maids and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said unto him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. The man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is that? You ask for my name. And then he blessed him. So Jacob called the piece Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. Responsive reading comes from Psalms 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where I will come my help. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will keep from all evil. He will keep your life. second reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 28. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, groaning about in labor's pain until now. And not only the creations, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption and redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we will wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. 
We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading on this first week of Lent comes from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, beginning with verse 36. And then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated and actually like to invite the kids up. Yeah, the kids, we... Began last week having the kids come back up, and you guys can come on up and sit up here. How you guys doing? Good. Good? All right. There you go. So, do you guys know how to pray? Show me how you pray. Show me how you pray. What do you do? You fold your hands, you bow your head a little bit. Yeah, that's a good way to pray. Do you think there's other ways to pray too? Yeah, yeah. What are some other ways do you think to pray? What do you think? Can you just have like a, a talk with God like you're, he's your friend? Yeah, you sure can. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice when we fold our hands and bow our heads because that really helps us kind of focus on what we're praying about. But you know what? If, if, you're, if you're riding your bike, can you be praying to God? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I like to ride a bike, and I always pray to God when I'm a, I don't close my eyes. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit, but not much. I keep them open, though. You have a dirt bike from Christmas? Yeah. 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 But see, you can, you can pray anytime. How many of you pray at dinner time? Before you eat? Okay. How many of you pray at bedtime? Yeah. Do you know I had a prayer when I was growing up, and I still remember it to this day, a prayer that, that my parents taught me. I do not know where they got it from. Because whenever I pray it, somebody says, where in the world did that ever come from? And I go, I don't know. It just happened. Should I pray it for you? Okay, okay. It goes, it goes our Savior dear, be always near. Keep me from evil, harm, and fear. Forgive me if I have this day done any wrong in work or play. Help me always to do right. And bless me every day and night. Amen. I still remember it, and I still pray it sometimes, too. But it's just something that growing up, that's what we did before bedtime every night. So does, does Jesus teach us how to pray? Yeah, yeah he does. He does. And so what, what is the best way to learn how to pray? Pr 
practice, right? Just like playing basketball, just like playing the flute or anything like that. The way in which you learn how to do it is you practice, right? Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Should we practice praying? So let's fold our hands and bow our head. And you guys repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for prayer. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. See, just an easy little prayer, right? All right. Well, we're going to sing to you guys as you go back. And if you'd like a little treat, take one and, and take it back, okay? So go ahead and take some. And we're going to sing. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're beginning our Lenten series right now, and as you can see over on the, the baptismal area over there, it's, we're not only returning to God, but we're returning to prayer, and that's the main focus today, is returning to prayer, where Jesus is deep in prayer with his disciples, as our gospel reading in Matthew has, Jesus and his disciples together. But prayer is a very fundamental part of Christian life. It's a reflective nature of the Lenten season of Lent. And it's a perfect time to think about our own prayer life. How many of you prayed this morning when you got out of bed? I like the honesty out there. How many pray every evening before you go to bed? All right. How many of you pray before meals? Yeah, well, that's good. A good prayer life is a very healthy thing for each of us. And again, the gospel reading from Matthew has Jesus and his disciples going to Gethsemane, Jesus going off in prayer while his disciples take a nap. Yep. Yep. Jesus goes off to pray, asks them to please stay awake during this time, but what do they do? Lights out. Take a nap. Isn't that how it is with so many of us in prayer? We're asked to pray, yet what is going on in our minds and our hearts at that time that we are praying? Are we going through the grocery list? Are we thinking about other things maybe? Our minds get so scattered with so many things. Is prayer really what it's supposed to be? There's always that little twinge of conscience that comes when, when conversation actually turns into prayer. And if you'd ever like to see what I mean, just if you're in a group of people, ask somebody to volunteer to pray. Because what happens? It'll get deathly quiet. Yes, it will. And believe me, the quietness isn't because they're praying. No. Well, they might be praying. Praying that please don't ask me to pray again. Yeah. No, God has an invitation. He has a command for all of us to be in constant prayer. Constant prayer. To always be praying. It's not that, that we might, might not have good intentions about, about praying. Everybody's got good intentions about it. But scripture passage such as Paul's encouragement in, in 1 Thessalonians is to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing. But when we think about things like that or, or when we're asked to pray, we flinch. Matter of fact, 
For most of us, we tend to worry more in our lives than pray in our lives. We worry more than we pray, and it should be the opposite. We certainly do not pray without ceasing. So ask yourself, does your prayer life measure up to to what God's Word illustrates? I mean, think about that. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. Does it measure up to what God illustrates? Do we even stand up to our own standard of prayer? I hope by the time we're done here and through this Lenten season, but also today, that we are reminded that when God calls us to pray, when God calls us to pray, He provides the means to do so and even fulfills what we are unable to do. And that He promises us in Scripture. So often we, we think we have to pray a certain way, but I can't do that. And, and we get a little confused about things. But, but if we were to just look to God and ask Him, He is going to give us the words. He's going to give us the abilities. But even if we don't think we have the words, God certainly knows what is in our hearts. In the Old Testament reading, Jacob is returning to Canaan, having been put through the ringer with his father-in-law, Laban. He, he's nervous about fleeing with these people and, and their livestock. I mean, it, it, it all is rightly his, but he's nervous about it. He's worried about encountering his twin brother, Esau, who, who he imagines is still a little angry about the stealing of the blessing thing that went on. But Jacob's world is kind of unsettled. And many of us may be able to relate to that. But Jacob's world is unsettled, and and so he splits his his whole traveling company into two camps. You know, those people he's traveling with, he, he separates them. You go this way, you go this way. And that's in hopes that if 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 Esau and the and the four hundred men traveling with him encounter one of those camps, well, one of the camps will be spared. The other one's going to make it. The, the one will be spared, the one sadly won't. But, but here's the interesting thing that happens next, and that's where our reading came from today, is that Jacob encounters a man, and they have this wrestling match. They end up wrestling all night long. And apparently it was quite a match, because neither one of them came out on top. It didn't seem to be a winner. But see, Jacob wasn't wrestling with just anyone that night. He was wrestling with God himself. Face to face with God, wrestling with God. And more specifically, he was wrestling with Jesus. Now, some people may think of the Scripture as an allegory or a made-up story, but it's not. It's, the wrestling match certainly happened, and, and proof of that is because of what happened with Jacob. You know, he gets that hip knocked out of, out of joint, and, and he has this lifelong limp to prove what happened in that wrestling match. And even though we, too, have some struggles, we have some wrestling matches maybe with God once in a while, similar to what Jacob was, we too are going to come out with some scars maybe. But one lesson that we can learn is that the trials and the temptations that, that God allows us to bear in our lives, ultimately intended not to destroy us. Again, we, we may have some battle scars or we We may have some struggles in our lives, but God does not intend it for us to be destroyed. But it's to build us up, and like Jacob, to bless us. Just like the cross of Christ, God, God can use suffering. Use suffering to bring about good. Use chaos to bring about beauty.
what we all can do is maybe use this event with Jacob as a representation of our prayer lives. I mean, think about your prayer lives. In a, in a sense, we all wrestle with God in our prayers. Maybe we struggle with, with thinking that it's an unanswered prayer. Not quite going the way we would want it to go. But then we have to ask ourselves and be truthful about it is maybe, maybe God wants us to see things in a different light. You ask for the things that you believe you need but find that God may disagree. You struggle with the prayers not answered as you hope for. You long for God's clear guidance for his direction. Lord, lead me, please. But often we feel we're left to struggle, to battle it out. Groaning under the weight of trials that, yes, we must endure. But in the end, through our prayers, through our wrestling, God changes us. God forms us into new creations. He molds you into something more like Jesus. We, we are the clay. He is the potter, right? He is forming us. Selfishly, or should I say sinfully, we, we often perceive our, our prayers as a time of our wrestling with God. But think about it. What if that time with God is God wrestling with us? God wrestling with us, a time that he uses to reorient our perspectives, our perceptions, so that we can grow in our faith, grow in our lives, to learn from things. One of the things Jacob says to his foe is, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Well, what Jacob is basically saying is, Lord, I'm not going to stop praying until you answer me. And maybe we need to do that more in our lives, in our prayer lives. Sounds a lot like the parable of the persistent widow, the one where the widow comes before the unrighteous judge again and again and again, just being so persistent about asking, asking over and over again until... Finally, finally the judge gives in. See, the problem is that most of us do not come to prayer prepared to go toe-to-toe with, with God all night long. We say a prayer and we want it to happen. Boom. That second, that minute. We don't train ourselves up to be prayer warriors. And in so many ways, we're just not equipped for the battle that maybe we do need to have. In fact, not only do we do a pretty poor job of being constant in our prayers, but we're not even sure how to pray. Yet God gives us a pretty good example of how to pray in the Lord's Prayer. That's a teaching tool to teach us how to talk with God when all we really need to do is talk with him like he's a friend. Just like we do with our own friends. We try to pray, but our emotions overwhelm us. We're filled maybe with some guilt about something. We don't feel as though we have any kind of credibility to ask God for anything. You know, we're probably a lot more like Peter, James, and John than, than we are like Jacob, falling asleep when we should be praying, taking a nap, dozing off when we should be alert, awake. We identify with Peter and the others. We feel a little sheepish. We stumble maybe a little in our prayer life, but in, instead of just like getting right back up on that horse, we've got to let it go instead. But we do, we need to just keep going forward in our prayer time to return to prayer. I hope and pray that after this, this lesson that we do hear the Lord talking to us. 
speaking to us about our prayer lives and, and how is that going? Paul offers us an answer when he writes, The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit intercedes for us. See, we don't always know what we are praying about, or maybe we don't know how to pray about something. But God intercedes through the power of the Holy Spirit, and God knows what is in our hearts. Your prayers may falter, but the Holy Spirit makes up for it. What we cannot do, God does for us. Where we fail, God, of course, is perfect. God commands us all to pray, but just like with every other command he gives us, he he does not leave us alone to do it. He is there with us, God Emmanuel. The command simply brings you back to that foot of the cross, though. And that's where our Lenten season leads us, to return to prayer, to return to the foot of the cross of Christ. God wants us to know that our prayers are a means by which he is forming us, molding us, and interceding for us where we fall short. When God calls you to prayer, and he does, he meets you there. He provides the means to do so. He he even fulfills what we are unable to do. But as we continue through this Lenten season, as we return to worship, as we return to God, as we return to prayer, I pray that our, our lives are comforted, And we are encouraged to to joyfully respond to Jesus' call. A call of faith to return to prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand if you are able. Would you please bow your heads with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, you've given us such a great gift. Lord, you want to take, uh, you want to build a uh, relationship with us. And so you open the door for us to have conversation with you, to be able to share our burdens, to be able to say thank you, and to be able to hear your voice instructing us. And this is the way. Walk in it. So, Lord, help me always to trust you, always to act according to your grace. Help me to wait patiently for you, even if it means suffering in silence for a while. By your grace and by your power, by the power of your spirit, open our hearts to pray and talk with you each and every day. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, I long to grow deeper in prayer life, but Lord, that is where the struggle lies as well. I know that conversation with you carries power and it changes lives, changes my life. But there are times when I find it hard to focus, when I, I, the language just does not come clear. And I fall into the trap thinking that my words have to be right, that it has to be eloquent in order for it to really work. Yet, Lord, we've got the witness of those who have gone before us, like Martin Luther, that said, "Fewer words, the fewer the words, the better." In prayer, yes. So, gracious God, help break down that barrier that I can just talk with you in everyday language, just like we talk to a friend. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we lift to you those who are heavy on our hearts, those who we know need your strength. And so, Lord, we we lift up to you those that are serving in the armed forces of this nation. And namely, among us, we we lift up to you Alex Holly and Ryan Baxter, Tia Hughes, Gunnar Welsh, and all others who 
offer themselves to serve our nation in this way. Grant them courage and strength to face what they must face. And let hope and comfort attend their families. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you establish the leaders of nations and you remind us to pray for those in leadership as well. So we lift up to you our lift up our, our elected leaders to you. Lord, break through the anger and the pride and, and all of this the, all of the barriers that that are prevent our our leaders from seeing each other as fellow human beings and those who have been called by you to carry out a task and that is to see to the common good so Lord we lift up to you our elected leaders that you would pull down these barriers that every evil scheme would be brought to nothing and that the common good would be come full in focus that our nation may be healed and that we would truly be a city set upon a hill that you called us to be. For all of these, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we left up to you all of who, those who are suffering power outages and food shortages and lack of drinking water due to the recent winter storms and who are suffering losses in their family. Open the hearts of your people to their neighbors in need. Empower those whom you've also called uh, to see to the water and electrical systems and food distribution, that the common good would be served, that people's lives would be able to be mended, put back together. For all these, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, may your strength come to those who are longing for your healing, longing for your comfort. We remember especially today Jerry Sheets and Bev Balliot, Roger Kerr, Susan Kamara, Bill Brown, Roy Scogan, Carol Lee Lindenberg, Sherry Lamb, Marlene Schultz, and Zoe Bolden. We also join with family and friends as they pray for Susan and Keaton, Patty, and Sarah, and Sharon, and Janelle, Linda, and Phil. Anita, and Emery, and Emmett, and Alyssa, and also all those that we name in our hearts. Lord, for all of these, may your, they sense your tangible comfort your tangible presence among them and also empower us that we would reflect you and your light uh, as we attend to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Lord God, empower us to try something different as we join in conversation with you. To start and end our day with prayer, to lift up short prayers as to you as often as we can to be able to really truly counter blessings and to say thank you more than we've ever shared that with you before that we might not take so many things for granted to be able to pray over our daily schedules as well lifting them up to you and to ask uh, your help for our daily to-do lists and to say a prayer for a spouse or a child as we give them a hug such a great privilege and thank you Lord so all of these things and whatever else that you see that we need grant us O oh Lord for we do lift them to you in the great name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to dismiss just one announcement and that is that we have a chili feed that is going to be happening here in just a couple of weeks at, on the 14th of March and this is a grab and go or a come and stay whichever way you want to do it but we need what we need you to do is if you want to participate and what I really encourage that you do uh, there's a sign up sheet on our kiosk out here or call a church office when, when, as soon as you find out so that we know exactly how many servings to make. So it just helps out everybody. Uh, but, and we're doing this in light of the fact that we can't have soup suppers like we're, we, we normally like to do, but it's good to be able to share a little hospitality amongst each other during this Lenten season just to give us a foretaste of just how good God is. So and with all of that, yes, remember, have conversation with God this week, regularly, often, every moment. <laughs> and may you all go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.